just a few moments, the Wayne County prosecutor is expected to hold a press conference on the Naziah Harris case. You may remember she's the 13 year old who was last seen back in January getting off a school bus on Detroit's east side. Investigators have searched countless areas in the city and across Metro Detroit, including part of Pittsfield Township and a pond in Clinton Township with no success. That press conference just getting started. Let's go ahead and listen in now live. I have spent decades of my career looking at pictures of murdered people. When I was trying homicide cases for six straight years in, as an assistant prosecutor, I would spend hours thinking about the victim whose case I was getting ready to try, wondering how they spent their last weeks, their last days, their last hours, and their last minutes of their lives. What were they thinking about? Did they know that the end was near? And if it was someone they knew, what must, have they been, what must they have been thinking as they were shot, stabbed, or whatever mechanism of death was used and confronted them with by the person they knew or loved? I can't imagine the thought that goes through their minds. But it's always, always a thousand times worse when the person is a child or a baby, someone in the dawn of their lives who haven't begun to live their lives. The picture behind me is of Zaniah, and that will always be haunting because it was taken just a short time before the evidence shows that she was never seen or heard from again. It was taken by Nazaria herself, a selfie. That's the last known picture that we know about of her. And it was pointed out to me by one of the detectives on this case and by one of the prosecutors. She is smiling and waving and saying hello. But little did she know that she was really saying goodbye. We will provide to you later a very skeleton timeline of the time right before her death, before and after. Of course, the detail would be provided in court. The evidence shows overwhelmingly in this case that she is in fact deceased. The last time she was seen alive was January the 9th of this year, 2024, almost nine months ago. Her missing status was reported to the Detroit Public School Police Department by her grandmother on that very day when she never returned home from school. And again, that was January the 9th, 2024. In early February of 2024, the case was turned over to the Detroit Police Department. Frankly, that should have happened right away. But they began investigating immediately. The evidence would further show that through text messages, through text messages that we know and that we have, Zaniah and this defendant were going to meet after school on January the 9th. We know that she did indeed meet up with the defendant that we're charging in this case. We also know that several people close to Mr. Butts, who we were charging later, saw them together in several different locations, people that he knew well. We have evidence that at 9.30 p.m. on that day that Mr. Butts checked into a motel and the Zaniah was never seen or heard from again. Not from her family, not from her schoolmates, not from her friends, not from social media where she was extremely active with her friends, not from teachers, no one. We know that she had no medical conditions that would cause a life-threatening medical emergency to her. And he again was the last person that saw her alive. She would have turned 14 years old just 10 days ago on September the 16th of 2024. And again, no one has seen or heard from her. You look at that face and you do not see the horrors that she had gone through in her short life. The exploitation, the molestations, the sexual abuse, and the pregnancy that she was concealing. The evidence will show that from one of her text messages to and with Jarvis Butts. And we also know, the evidence will show, that there's no evidence of anyone else being the father of that child other than the defendant himself who we charge today. And he knew she was pregnant. We know that she was also searching for ways to abort the baby. We know that sexually explicit photos requested by him of her and that she complained to her. All the hands we let the man charging with her death and also her long-term sexual abuse. The process that man has put together. Excellent. Video of 111 gigabytes. Witnesses and witness statements body-worn camera, and let me not forget, it was Tina and Matt's memo, but the work of the Detroit Police Department. Anyway, we re reviewed 111 gigabytes of video, witnesses and witness statements, 
body-worn camera footage, surveillance video, police reports, documents, 19 gigabytes, medical records, search warrant returns, phone extractions, which came to 506 gigabytes. Today we are charging Jarvis Butts with one count of first degree premeditated murder, one count of criminal sexual conduct in the second degree, and one count of child sexually abusive material. Today we are also charging Mr. Butts with more counts of criminal sexual conduct on two more girls, yes girls, on two other separate cases. The girls in question now are 20 and 11 respectively today, but both were under the age of 13 years old at the time the offenses occurred that we're charging. We are charging that one victim who is now 20 years old, that from April of 2012 to April of 2014, it's alleged that, that Defendant Buck sexually assaulted the victim at a residence in Detroit. Further facts and evidence on that matter will be placed on the record at the preliminary examination. In that case, we charge Mr. Butts with criminal sexual conduct, one count in the first degree, person under 13, defendant 17 or older. In that case, we are also charging Mr. Butts with three counts of criminal sexual conduct in the second degree, person under 13, defendant 17 years or older. In the second criminal sexual conduct case, well, I guess the third, that we're charging today, we are alleging that the victim who is now 13 years old, that from July 2015 through July 2017, we're alleging that he sexually assaulted the victim at a residence in Detroit, and again, further facts and evidence will be developed at the preliminary examination. Defendant Butts have been charged with, uh, in that case, one count of criminal sexual conduct in the second degree. Child under the age of 13, Mr. Butts over the age of 17. Based on all the evidence that I've laid out now and much more that will be, sh be shown later in court, based on all these cases we will present in court, Mr. Butts targeted and befriended women who had to have sexual relationships with their young daughters. He would have relationships with their mothers, but his true desire was to have sex with their young daughters. That's what the evidence will show. He was a classic and expert groomer and pedophile. It's incredibly sad, incredibly unspeakable, and we want to bring justice to her, to her and her family. I have to take this moment to say something to you, and this is not directed at all at Naziah's family, who by all accounts had many in her family that lo truly loved her. This is directed to everyone else listening to me now. We all must, we must be very careful who we let into our hearts and our homes and our lives, especially if you have children. We must be very careful who we have around our children and elders, respectively. We must also be very careful who we leave our children with, even if they, even if, even, even if they are in a relation, relationship partners, family, and friends. I'll say that again. Even if they are relationship partners, families, or friends. Life can be hard enough at times, but when it comes to our children, we must be deliberative, we must be diligent, and laser focused on their safety. And sometimes we must, sometimes we must make decisions about them and their lives that we may not like and that they may not like, but it's for the betterment of them and their safety and their future. When something doesn't feel right, even if it's just that voice in your head, it usually isn't right. And sometimes when we are attentive and we do everything right by our children, things can still happen and still very, go, go very wrong despite our best efforts. This can happen to good watchers of children. But we must always ask ourselves at the end of each and every day, was I right by each member of my household in terms of their safety? Did I do right by my children? Now, of course, Mr. Butts is presumed innocent unless and until he was he's found guilty on each and every crime and count that we have charged today. We have been told this morning that the arraignment will be tomorrow, we think at 10.30 a.m. in the morning, but we don't have confirmation of that yet. But the arraignment, we are told, will happen tomorrow morning. Thank you very much. Chief. Okay. I'll switch boxes with you. Good morning. This is one of the most difficult cases uh, that I have been a part of, uh, and I'm just so very thankful to the detectives and the investigators in homicide. Uh, the tragedies that happened to this little girl uh, touches each and every one of us, uh, and unfortunately, um, she lost her life at the hands of someone who should have been concerned about her safety. Uh, I just want to take a couple moments and thank Madam Prosecutor and her team for the amazing work, uh, the commitment, the hours that they put into this work. 
I want to thank our major crimes, missing persons, homicide, specifically Sergeant Jones uh, and Lieutenant Amber Roberson. When I, when I tell you the days and hours and the tenacity that they put into this work, um, it, it's not often that I'm, I'm not surprised by our officers, but when I saw the work and the hours and the time that they put in there, I was absolutely in awe at my weekly briefings and the time that they put into this case. Um, it is not an eight-hour-a-day job. It, is a, a, it, it ends when they have to get a couple hours of sleep. And I will tell you, with all the other things going on, uh, this case was always top of mind. Uh, certainly want to thank uh, DPS uh, for their assistance in transferring over some of the information that we were able to get from them uh, with this case. Uh, there were a number of people, our community uh, in particular, uh, even our Board of Police Commissioner Tamler, Tamara Liberty Smith, who was out knocking on doors and passing out flyers, all uh, with the desire uh, to bring uh, this little girl home to her family. Uh, quickly, as the investigation unfolded, uh, the officers realized uh, that was going to be very difficult. Uh, without going into great detail, uh, I will tell you, uh, as the prosecutors indicated, hours and hours and many gigabytes of information and phone records and, and knocking on doors and pulling video went into this investigation uh, and sadly we find ourselves where we are now but if there's any solace in any of this uh, is that we we take a lesson from this uh, we make strong and good decisions for our children keep them out of harm's way we are not pointing out anything that someone did wrong we just want to make sure people do a lot more things right uh, and again, Madam Prosecutor, thank you and your team for the work. All right, the Chief and I will take a few questions, if you have any. Yeah, um, um, how did Jarvis Butts have access to Ms. Ida? He knew some of their family members, some of her family members. Can you talk about the time frame when you mentioned grooming? Are you able to elaborate at all over how long of a period of time he may have quote unquote groomed or knew her or why? All I can and will say at this point that it started in 2022. So just for accuracy, this little girl's remains have never been found? No. Is there a thought? Where her body has never been found. Any thought of where she may be? Well, if we knew that, we would certainly have a case that we weren't trying, that we were trying without a body. We ask this, can you say what triggered charges now? Again, there is an incredible amount of material, and one of the reasons why lately I've been giving out amounts of material that we've been going through, because I think people sometimes just do not get it or understand about all the work that it takes by the investigators and by the prosecutors to put a case like this together. Whenever you have a case like this, where there has been no body found, it makes it more difficult and much more investigation must be done because we have to be able to prove that the person is deceased. Are you able to say how long this suspect was on your radar or when you really started locking in on him? No, by law I can't really comment on that because that would leave me in a place where I can't talk about it right now. Could things have maybe moved forward a little faster if the school police had got with Detroit police right away? Yes. Can you talk a little more about? No, I better not. I have strong opinions there. <clears throat> you added to that the evidence, however, suggests that Ms. I. Harris is dead, correct? We, we are going to be able to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that she's dead, as we must do by law. You can't say what, why? Okay. I, 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 because we, no one's seen her, no friends, no family, no teachers, no medical conditions. Um, even on her birthday, 10 days ago, she contacted no one. This was a child that never missed school, but the school hasn't seen or heard from at, at all again. This is, a, this is a young girl who was very active on social media and crickets, nothing, since January the 9th of 2024. Anything from the defendant? And we have other things, too, that will come out in court. Any cooperation law or utterances, uh, statements from the defendant? I can't get into that. Without being able to speak in detail, I'm sure, uh, do you have any evidence to indicate manner and location of death or where this might have occurred? No, because we, don't, we can't do that unless we have a body. Uh, Mr. Butts is currently facing charges to be prosecuted by your office. Can you talk additional charges before these? Can you talk about those at all? He is, and we next appear in court on Monday, January 30th. 
Have Thank there you. been any other arrests made um, in this case? I don't think so. We no. saw, we just saw an unfounded rumor that there were family members arrested. Didn't know if you just watched that or confirmed that. It's, un it's an unfounded rumor. It's not true. Thank you. Do you have an idea of how long this may have been being molested? Again, the um, sexual abuse began based on the evidence that we have in 2020, 2022. Or at least the grooming began in 2022. Are you able to say how far along she was on her pregnancy? We don't know because we don't have a body. I have a question for Chief White just about missing children sort of broadly. When these types of cases happen, obviously we get the reports all the time. Of missing <coughs> Can you talk about what you think didn't work in this case? You know, uh, in terms of like maybe the seriousness that was considered when she first went missing, it was the DPSD CD or something like that to you guys? I would much rather have had the case earlier. Uh, I don't know if the outcome would have been any different based on some of the things we've learned in the course of the investigation, um, but we may have had an opportunity to recover even more evidence. But we're pretty confident uh, that the evidence that we have uh, is strong. We, we know it is, as in fact. Um, but you, you can never have enough evidence. So if there's anything that could have gone a little bit better uh, with regards to the first time that we were brought in, I would have wanted to be brought in much earlier. Uh, for that reason. Just some background on uh, driver spots. What's his age and is he from Detroit? Uh, He's 41 years old. From, Detroit, from Highland Park, I believe. Yep. Yeah. And Chief, as soon as you guys got word of this, you guys were out immediately, right? I think you were even out searching. You guys set up a command post. Yeah, that's correct. I mean, we took over the case uh, after we were briefed. Uh, we took a charge of the case and our teams got engaged in it immediately and hit the ground running and uh, didn't look back. Can you talk about Chief White Army, Mr. Jones, the Mazias case, and connection to the other missing young people, girls, children, and all of what your workload looks like, how you balance those cases that are able to, the numbers of youth that are missing right now? Yeah, well, uh, we, we make that public. We put it on our social media pages. Uh, there's, there's a number of misinformation, misconceptions about uh, missings. Uh, oftentimes what we have is kids that run away for a day or two um, they they have a way of investigating these cases they know the ones that that uh, routine runaways if you will uh, they still look they still go out but there's ways to do it going to the school social media with kids uh, you know it's, it's, a, it's a big benefit to us for our investigations um, and they also know when they become uh, serious missings all missings are serious but internally there's a title that it has been elevated to a serious missing and that involves a lot more work uh, and, and connection with the family. Each time we get a call, we go out to the home, uh, regardless of whether or not it's uh, a, a person who has run away or a routine runaway uh, or serious missing. We check the home. We have found kids in the home hiding. Uh, so it's really complex and would take its own news conference to explain it. I will tell you this, they do a very good job. Uh, we've got thousands of kids this year that have been returned home, uh, many of which uh, were run away, so we don't have a, a, a condition where people are being, kids are being picked up on the street and kidnapped. Uh, we did have an incident a couple of years ago where that happened, and the prosecutor charged that person. In fact, it was just recently convicted. Uh, so um, it's a lot that goes into it. We'd be more than happy to sit down and, and explain our process with you if you want to do something on an aside. Chief, right. assuming then, inferring that investigators knew early on this was not a runaway case or, or just if you can share some details of the fact that I'm assuming you knew pretty quickly this was not what she did as far as running and there was some foul play involved and if you can address the complexities uh, that the prosecutor alluded to of, of not having a body and how you build a case around that. Well the prosecutor builds cases we, we bring evidence to, to the prosecutor we, we bring our investigation and she makes the, the, pro, uh, the uh, charging decision. So I, won't, I don't want to get into that lane because it's not mine. I'll, I'll tell you, as I said earlier, and the prosecutors alluded to a lot, and there's a lot in the press release as to what goes into it. These folks looking at hours and hours of video evidence, and as, as the prosecutor indicated earlier, I don't think people recognize in this new age of modern technology what that has done to investigative process. Uh, the days of, of old school investigations, some of that stuff still is, is valid and important. You got to get out on the street, knock on doors, and talk to people. But what the digital world has brought us is new opportunities to find additional information and, and, and the cadence in which people communicate, right? Every, every one of us have these things in our pocket called cell phones that we use for everything. And if people go dark, 
uh, and they've never been dark, and particularly kids, they, they show their food, they show their school, they, they take selfies, and, and, and when that stops, that elevates uh, your concern as to why did it stop. So it's a very complex process. These are the experts. I'm just a chief. Um, but, you know, again, we can sit down and talk to you about it in, in great detail, but a lot goes into it. And when you're talking about 111 gigabytes of information and, and text messages and dumping phones and, and literally going through methodically each one of the pages and the text messages and the communication as to when they stopped and the last word said that should have uh, prompted a response, maybe it did, maybe it didn't, I can't get into that, all those things elevate your curiosity uh, and, and brings you into other areas. So it takes a lot more time, but when you get it all right and you pull all the things together, you become as confident as we are now with this case. Uh, and we're very, very, very happy uh, that this, this, this predator, this child predator, will not be able to hurt any more children, and, and frankly, any more women, because we know that the, the women were a pathway to the children. That's that period. And I'm going to stop there before I get in trouble with the prosecutor. Right. 506 gigabytes just from the cell phones. Are there any other people that are close to her family that may be charged or not? This investigation is over, and we have charged the one single person that's responsible for not only her death, the evidence show, but also for the sexual assaults that we have charged today. And what are his priors? Do we have oh, I definitely can't go there. I'll lose my law license. Chief, uh, some of Naziah's relatives said they previously had talked to CPS about allegations of sexual abuse going to Naziah and other kids. Did that ever make it to, to your office? Is that something that police have investigated before? Yeah, let me just say this, that if anyone that is watching this press conference um, right now or reads any of the coverage that I'm sure that you will give this has any reason to believe that they were a victim of his or that they know something else, we certainly welcome them to contact the Detroit Police Department. So you can't say if there were any previous reports on that? No. Has Mr. Butts made any admissions at all? We can't talk about that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sorry for this space. We're trying things out. This is a new building, as you know. And I can't see everybody, but so we'll, we'll work it out eventually. Thank you. That was a press conference held by Wayne County Prosecutor Kim Worthy on the Naziah Harris case. She's a 13-year-old girl who was last seen back in January getting off a school bus on Detroit's east side. In this update, officials say Naziah was killed, although her body has not been found, and that a suspect is a not been found, and that a suspect is in custody. 41-year-old Jarvis Butts from Highland Park is accused of sexually assaulting the girl, getting her pregnant, and killing her. The 42-year-old is expected to be arraigned tomorrow. Prosecutor Worthy said Naziah was not his only victim, and that he targeted women to have sex with their young daughters. Our Jordan Burroughs and Gino Vici are both there for that press conference and we'll have the latest starting on CBS News Detroit at noon. Hello there, welcome back. Welcome to the Back to the Vibe with Carlisa channel. Listen, if you're not a subscriber, I highly recommend you to subscribe to this channel. So I'm sending the invitation to you. We talk about real life situations here. We talk about how things can be negative and what we can do to change things for the future to make sure that positivity comes from out of this. So in this situation, we have lost a beautiful young lady. Nasiah, um, our prayers and our condolences have been sent to the family uh, for sure. Family and the friends and her classmates. It saddens me to say that this 13-year-old lost her life to someone that she trusted. So not only did she lost her life, she was actually pregnant by this guy as well. So single parents, listen, be mindful. Be mindful of who you have around your children. Sometimes they be praying on you just to get to your kids, okay? So usually when things like this happen, it's because it's somebody that they knew that you done brought around. So listen, we're not going to blame the family at all, but it's just a learning lesson for many, okay? So like I said, our prayers going out to this um, baby's family because she's still a baby. And I always felt in my heart, it's a special place for people like this man.
I always felt that. I always feel that maybe, you know, with all the stuff that they're discovering, that all these pedophiles, these people that act like they don't want to live and all this extra, go put them on that island. Let them defend for themselves. Cover us. Keep our women and our kids safe. So as we move on, um, like I said, our prayers has been sent up. Our condolences has been sent out from the Vibe with Carlisa's channel. And until next time, let this be a learning lesson. I don't have too much to say about the guy that did it. I hope they throw the book at him. And that is it. And I hope and pray that they do find this baby's body. She didn't deserve it. I don't care what she had did, how she felt the victim. She did not deserve the outcome. See you next time. Be blessed.